Before we get into public goods, it may be useful to take a look at private goods first. Most commodities fall into this second category. If a commodity is excludable, then person A's consumption prevents anyone else from consuming it. Look, if you have a soda and you drink that soda, that prevents anyone else from consuming it. Excludability deals with the quantity of consumption. There's rivalry in consumption if person A's consumption interferes with the quality of consumption for anyone else. Think about that drink again. Even if you do share it, the quality of your consumption is probably diminished. Rivalry deals with the quality of consumption. In the end, who pays for a private good? Well, since you would exclude anyone else from consuming it, and even if they tried to, their quality would be diminished, you, the person who consumes the commodity, would naturally pay for it. What about public goods? If a commodity is non-excludable, then once it's been made available for person A, there's no way to prevent others from using it. And there's non-rivalry in consumption if person A's use in no way detracts from the quality of consumption for anyone else. The classic example of a pure public good is a lighthouse. Not so very long ago, ships didn't have radar, sonar, depth sounders, or even a very reliable schedule. Ships loaded with valuable cargo could arrive along the coast any time of the day or night. Let's say that shipping company A gets tired of losing vessel after vessel of valuable cargo due to ships crashing against the rocks in the dark and sinking to the ocean floor. So company A invests in building a lighthouse so that its ships can make their way safely into port even in the dark. Shipping company B has grown tired of losing cargo too and now realizes that it can take advantage of the fact that company A has built a lighthouse. After all, once the beacon of light is available for A's ships, other ships can't really be prevented from using the signal, it's non-excludable, and a hundred ships could see the signal from offshore without decreasing the power or intensity of that signal for anyone else, it's non-rivalrous. The owner of company A becomes indignant that company B is free riding on the resources it has built and demands that company B contribute funds to help pay for the lighthouse. Company B refuses. After all, what would be the point? If A's ships want to use the lighthouse, there's nothing they can do to decrease the signal for B, and really, no way to prevent B from using it even if they don't pay. Company A ends up frustrated and has no wish to use its own resources to build another lighthouse that everyone else would use for free. In the end, who pays for a public good? Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Because of the free ridership issue, public goods tend to be underproduced or not produced at all. As with many market failures, this creates a role for the government. Because no one wants to voluntarily step up to pay for a public good, the government collects taxes from everyone, then distributes those revenues to support public goods. Think about it. Much of what the government provides falls in the category of non-excludable, non-rivalrous goods. Parks, roads, fire service, national defense, and so on. Who pays for a public good? Well, in the end, effectively we all contribute by paying taxes, and then the government provides the goods. Next time, comparative advantage.